Hello, and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today, we're going to be working once again from Tanya Holland's Brown Sugar Kitchen Cookbook, and we're going to be making her macaroni and cheese. This is a baked macaroni and cheese with a breadcrumb topping. So, if you haven't had one of those, it might be a little bit different, but it, and it is a little bit different than the uh, one that we made. That's my favorite, which is the Ashley Christensen's Pools Diner uh, Macaroni Au Gratin. But they're both baked. That one does not start with a roux, where this one does. And uh, that one does not have a breadcrumb topping. It has just uh, browned cheese on top. So we're starting with a roux based creamy sauce. So I am melting some unsalted butter in my pan here. I've chosen my saucier because we're going to be using a whisk and it's much easier to get into. There are no little corners to, for the whisk to for the flour and sauce to get sort of stuck in. So the whisk gets everything out of that in the saucier. I've got my oven heated to 350 degrees because we are going to bake it. Uh, and I've already boiled my macaroni just in salted water. She says 10 to 12 minutes. I boiled mine for 11 minutes until it's tender. So uh, the, for the macaroni I buy, I, it tends to be about 11 minutes. So I think that's how long it is for the Pools Diner mac and cheese. I forget, but the timing is pretty good. So my butter is melted. And I'm going to stir in my flour, which I've already measured, my some salt, some kosher salt, which is the only salt in this recipe, and some Worcestershire sauce, which is different, which I did not pre-measure. That should be plenty of that um, and I'm going to get this stir starting to be stirred up there we go and we're adding uh, some chopped minced garlic and some grated ginger fresh ginger uh, this is this is interesting the ginger is Certainly a different ingredient. Garlic is not, but I haven't ever seen fresh ginger in a mac and cheese recipe, but this one has it. So now we're just going to cook this for about a minute. We don't want it to brown. We just want to sort of cook the flour with the butter to cook out some of the flour taste before we add our creamy ingredients. It smells mostly like Worcestershire sauce and garlic. Um, another thing I've already pre-prepared is I have a casserole dish, two liters, she said. Mine's a little bit bigger than two liters. Better to go a little bigger than a little smaller. Um, and I've buttered it. So a little bit of the unsalted butter. There we go. That's about a minute. And so now I'm going to stir in, I'm going to start with uh, some heavy cream. I'm going to gradually pour this in and I am going to end up whisking this but I'm going to start with my, with my spatula. Heavy cream and then I'm going to add my whole milk. So we've got a creamy sauce going here and I'm going to switch to my whisk because we are supposed to whisk this pretty constantly uh, for about 10 minutes until the sauce has thickened. So 
I'm going to be here for about 10 minutes and whisking and making sure that it doesn't get lumpy. It shouldn't at this point. Or, and it doesn't get stick to the bottom. And I'll be back in about 10 minutes when it's all done. And I'll show you what it looks like. You might see this one. Fast forward. We'll see. This is about four minutes shy of 10 minutes, and it certainly has thickened up. Um, and she says to, so it thickens slightly, and I would say that is more than slightly thickened. So I'm debating about whether to stop it now. Um, I think I'm gonna give it another minute maybe. All right, so we're about one to two minutes shy of 10 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and switch uh, and pull it off the heat. And so it's pretty thick. You can kind of see that there. Um, and we're going to stir in our cheese. So this is sharp cheddar cheese. I happen to be using white because that is what I have. Um, I think probably usual would be yellow, but you know, it's gonna be fine. And we're supposed to stir this in until it is melted. And that's a lot of cheese for that sauce, but that's okay, we like it cheesy. It's taken a while for all of this cheese to melt. You can do it a little bit by, you know, just a little by little. But um, while we are stirring this, I'm going to go ahead and add the last two ingredients for the sauce, which is a little bit of, she says Tabasco, I have Frank's, because that's what I keep, what I like, what I have at the time, at the moment, and some white pepper. So a lot of times people use white pepper with cream sauces just so there's not little black flecks. She says just a pinch, so I literally pinched it. All right, I'm going to put it over my warm burner just to see if that will get the last of the cheese melty. I feel like it's not entirely melted, but I also don't think it's going to get any more melted currently with the amount of heat in here because it has been a while and I've been stirring the whole time so it'll be fine it'll be fine I think I'm gonna call that good so you can see there's still little bits of cheese not quite melted but we're gonna bake it so it'll be fine um, and now we're gonna put in our cooked macaroni and mix that in. Get it fully coated with the cheesy sauce. There we go. We're going to transfer it to our buttered dish once it is all coated, which it is. Get this transferred to the buttered dish and spread out appropriately. And now we're going to be making our breadcrumb topping. Again, over medium heat. So we've got, let me get a spatula. <laughs> So I'm going to put the rest of the unsalted butter in my frying pan. And while that's melting, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Butter is all uh, melted. Now we're gonna add fresh breadcrumbs. Um, I keep the 
heels of my bread in the freezer. And then when I get a bunch and I don't have any more room, I dry them out in the oven and um, pulverize them in the food processor. And there we go, breadcrumbs. So from something I would otherwise waste. And all we're doing is getting this, these sort of coated in the butter. We, we're not trying to toast these here at all. Just to coat them in the butter. So once it's all done, all we have to do is spread it on top, sprinkle it on top, try to get it um, evenly coated. be a lot of breadcrumbs. Actually, it's like, there's so many breadcrumbs. I'm just going to dump it on and spread it across because there's a ton of breadcrumbs for this. Now, maybe I should have used a wider, thinner dish. I don't know. It holds it. So, that is it for out here, and all we have to do is bake this. So I've got my oven, like I said, at 350, and I'm going to put it in the oven until the sauce is bubbly and crumbs are browned. She says about 25 minutes. So I'm going to put this in the oven, and we'll see you in about 25 minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make macaroni and cheese from uh, Tanya Holland's Brown Sugar Kitchen. And this was a baked macaroni and cheese with a breadcrumb topping. I think the recipe was really good. We enjoyed the macaroni and cheese. Uh, it was creamy. It was a little bit thick. If I did one thing differently, I would cut down on the number, the amount of breadcrumb topping. It was just way too much. Now I might have used the wrong kind of breadcrumbs. So she says fresh breadcrumbs, which some people say what I did is fresh breadcrumbs. I don't know, whatever. Um, some people say it's more like fresh bread, just crumb like in small pieces. So that might have been the problem. I don't know. I wouldn't use as much of that topping next time. Um, and I probably would have uh, taken the sauce off a little bit earlier. I think she says about 10 minutes. I think mine was done probably about eight minutes. Um, it got a little bit thick. It was still fine. It was still sauce. Um, it would have been fine at that point once you mix everything in as a uh, as a non-baked mac and cheese. You could certainly eat it like that. Uh, I think I prefer a browned cheese topping, so I might do that instead of breadcrumbs, but that's just up to personal preference. Um, but it did reheat very well, which is one of the good things about using a roux-based sauce like this instead of the just cream based sauce that uh, the pool Steiner mac and cheese is, which is still my favorite, have to say. But this was really good. I would certainly make it again. I would change it slightly next time, but other than that, it was great. Whole family loved it. Um, and we had enough for two dinners, basically. The second one was a little lighter than the first one and she says it serves six. So we got eight servings out of it. Kind of small on the second one, but still. Um, yeah, so we enjoyed it. If you try it, let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed it and give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to come back and watch me make something else next week. Mm -hmm.